So we've been talking about covalent bonds, and when covalent bonds are formed, the atoms are going to share electrons. But do they share them equally? Well, sometimes they do, okay, and when they share electrons equally, they're called nonpolar bonds, right? And when they share electrons unequally, they're called polar bonds. And it all has to do with the electronegativity. So let's, for instance, look at some halogens. Fluorine has an electronegativity of 4, chlorine of 3, bromine 2.8, 2.5, 2.2. So in terms of chlorine, they both have the same exact electronegativity. So when the elements are the same, they're both pulling the electrons toward themselves exactly the same. And we say that they share equally, kind of nobody can win that tug of war. So when you have the same element like this, these molecules are nonpolar. Okay? We say we have a nonpolar bond. But what happens when the electronegativities are different? Okay, like iodine is 2.5 and chlorine is 3. So chlorine is pulling the electrons towards itself more strongly than iodine is able to, right? Because chlorine is smaller. So the result is that these electrons in this bond right here get pulled closer to chlorine. And we end up with what's called a dipole or a polar bond. So as if we look at a polar bond, again, chlorine has a higher electronegativity. And we can show this by drawing an arrow toward chlorine and making a positive on the left. We're saying that the, the iodine side is more positive because the negative electrons are being pulled over towards chlorine. The other way you can do this is that we can say that the iodine sign side has a partial positive side, sign and the chlorine sign side <laughs> has a partial negative sign. What I'm drawing right there is called a little, it's a delta, it's a Greek letter. Um, it's a partially positive charge and a partially negative charge. It just means that one side of the molecule is more negative than the other because the electrons are being pulled closer to chlorine than iodine. And we say that it's a polar bond or we say that it has a dipole or a dipole moment. Those are all sort of synonyms. How polar the bond is depends on how big the difference between the two electronegativities are. So if the difference between the two electronegativities is from like 0 to 0.4, we say that that's such a small difference that it's a nonpolar covalent bond. If it's between 0.4 and 1, we say it's, you know, fairly polar covalent. Between 1 and 1.7, it's very polar. <coughs> and then if it's greater than 1.7, we say that they're sharing so e unequally that one, elect one atom is actually giving the electrons to the other, and we end up with an ionic bond. So, for instance, if we look at these, this, these bonds, N and O, right? N, if you find it, has an electronegativity of 3, and O is 3.5. So the difference between those two is 0.5. So we say that it's moderately polar, okay? Moderately polar. You don't have to memorize these numbers if you'd be given. It's just to give you an idea of like sort of degrees of polarity. Na is 0.9 and fluorine is 4. Now you can see the difference there is 3.1. That's a very large difference. That's actually an ionic bond, which isn't surprising, right? Because this is a metal and this is a nonmetal, so it's probably bound to be ionic. Carbon and fluorine is 2.5 and 4. So the difference there is one and a half. So this is something we would call very polar. They're not sharing equally at all. Okay? And then C and H, 2.5 and 2.1, we say that the difference between these two elements is so small that they're basically sharing. So we're going to say this is nonpolar. Now, in reality, you're usually not going to be given the actual values because um, that's just a question of subtracting. Anybody can do that. So, like, how can you tell if something's going to be polar or not? So, in general, if the elements are the same, okay, like two fluorines or two nitrogens, or they're carbon and hydrogen, then it's going to be nonpolar.
Okay, so if they're the same element in the bond, like fluorine and fluorine, that's going to be nonpolar. Okay, anything with just carbons and hydrogens is also nonpolar because they're so close. If the two nonmetal atoms are different, we're just going to say it's polar. We don't care if it's moderately polar or very polar, we're just going to say they're different, like FCL are different, we're just going to say that's polar. If you have a metal and a nonmetal, we're going to go ahead and say that's ionic. Okay, so in the next um, video, we'll talk about how to figure out if the entire molecule is polar.